we're going to continue from our last video on the market for illegal goods. We uh, talked briefly about this graph, and I forgot to mention that E is the market equilibrium, equilibrium, PC is the price, and QC is the quantity, as I have here. Now, we're going to take a look at the penalties on sellers and buyers, because that's what we really should look at when we're talking about market for illegal goods. Pretty obvious that the prison is the cost of supplying illegal drugs. This brings a decrease in supply and the curve shifts leftward. As we see here, this was our free market where, with the blue lines, the blue supply curve and the blue demand curve. With the penalty, the, with the penalty on the sell seller, the difference is actually H and K. This is the penalty to the seller. And I should probably write that down. So this is to the seller. This is the penalty to the seller, this red line. So with this penalty, the quantity supplied at the market price of PC is QP and not QC because now we have a penalty to deal with. The supply of the drugs decreases to S plus CBL, CBL being the cost of breaking the law, and the new equilibrium point is at point F. At point F, we see that the price actually rose and the quantity decreased. Now, for penalties on buyers, again, prison terms and fines, those are the penalties. The demand would decrease and the demand curve shifts leftward from this blue demand curve to this red demand curve. Now, the penalty on the buyer is the difference uh, of A to J. So this red line here that I'm drawing is the penalty to, uh, which I am lagging right now. So, yeah, so this is the penalty to the buyer. So, yeah, we got that out of the way. So from the point, the difference between J to H, that is the penalty to the buyer. The quantity demanded at the market price of PC is again QP. The demand for the drug decreases from D to D minus CBL, CBL being the cost of breaking law. The new equilibrium point now is different than the penalties on sellers. It is at point G. The price actually falls and the quantity decreases. But the opportunity cost of buying the illegal good rises above PC. So the buyer pays the market price plus the cost, the cost of breaking the law, which is point not K, but point J, which I have here. So already we know that selling uh, causes the price to increase and, and the, causes the price to increase and the supply curve causes the supply curve to move left because the cost increases and for buying the price increases and the demand curve moves left because of cost and both of these two concepts together pretty much leads to higher prices and lower quantity right uh, I think that sounds logical. It sounds like drugs to me. Now let's take a look at the penalties on both buyers and sellers, or sellers and buyers. Uh, with both buyers and sellers being penalized for trading illegally, the demand and supply for illegal good decreases. So the new market equilibrium is at point H, which is uh, actually in here. It's what I'm hovering over right now, this H area, which is red on red which is pretty much a bad idea, I guess, to make everything so red. The PC is equal to price like before, but the quantity now has decreased to QP. The market price is the same, but the quantity bought, is, the quantity bought decreased. Now, the larger the penalties and the greater the degree of enforcement, that only means that the larger decrease in the demand and supply of the drug. Now, if penalties are heavier on sellers, the supply curve shifts farther than the demand curve and the market price is above the equal is above the equilibrium price. And if the penalties are heavier on buyers, the demand curve shifts farther than the supply curve and the market price is 
below equilibrium price. And these two things are something that you need to remember. You could probably draw a few graphs yourself and uh, take a look at how it differs from what we have here. Uh, I won't do that now because I'm running short on time. So that's an exercise for you, I guess. And the last thing I want to talk about is legalizing and taxing drugs. So the quantity bought could decrease if drugs was legalized and taxed. Actually, what will happen is if we put a high tax on drugs, that could decrease supply, raise the price, and achieve the same decrease in quantity bought as does a, prohib as does a prohibition on drugs. Or essentially, with a high tax, we could achieve the same level, the entirely the same thing as what would happen uh, if we uh, illegalized drugs. I don't think illegalized is a word, or made drugs illegal, that's a word. So uh, that's it for this video. Well, actually, there's one more thing. Yeah, uh, if we legalize and tax drugs, the pro of that would be that government would also collect tax revenue. So that's a good thing because the government would make a shitload of money collecting taxes from drug dealers. But uh, arguments for this extend beyond economics and it's something that I'm not going to get into. But other than that, uh, this is it for this chapter. Please rate, comment, subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you guys next time.